So how was it that you first were introduced to Herbie Hancock and what was it to get, what was the, the origination of that group? Yeah, well, that's an ironic story because I was following uh, Miles Davis around like a little puppy dog, you know, trying to copy his style. And I remember Miles Davis told me, don't copy him, get my own style. Mm -hmm. You know, that sort of just <laughs> like water off a duck's back. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still just like the way you play, you know? <laughs> sure, sure. So anyway, I used to always go hear Miles Davis and, and, and Herbie Hancock was in his group. And I was always like, uh, uh, everything Miles Davis did, you know, I wanted to do. Miles Davis had, uh, you know, sports cars. So I was in you know, Ferraris and stuff. So I was always admiring sports cars. And so I would always just talk to Herbie Hancock about sports cars when I would go see Miles. And we never even talked about music. I don't even think he knew I played. And oh, wow. so uh, one time, this is about 1968 or 69, Herbie Hancock uh, came through San Francisco. And at that time, I was doing my residency in psychiatry. You know, I'd already finished medical school. Uh, and Herbie Hancock needed a, a trumpet player for that one week. So somebody recommended me. And he said, oh, no, he's a doctor. You know, he's not a musician. And so, so I, I, told him, I said, well, just give me one chance. So he didn't know that I knew, had been listening to his music for years. So he had a little skeleton rehearsed. You know, since I, I went to the San Francisco Conservatory of Music, I could read well, blah, 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 musically. And uh, so he had a rehearsal, put the music up there. I knew all the music anyway by, by heart, just from listening to the music on record. But he didn't know that. So after the rehearsal, Herbie says to me, oh, you read well. I, I said, oh, thanks. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at, I could read the music, but I wasn't even looking at it. I just knew it. And so um, we played for one week. That's all he hired me for. And everybody was going to go back to New York. And he just says, you know, thanks. You sounded good. And I was disappointed. I, I wanted to be in, I never played with people of that caliber before musically. And uh, I, I said, oh, my God. So I told Billy Hart, who was the drummer in the band, you know, Herbie didn't ask me to join the band. He said, well, why don't you just go propose to him, say you want to be in the band? So I went to Herbie and said, man, I sure would love to be in this band. And he thought for about three seconds and said, okay, <laughs> just, just like that. <laughs> That's pretty drum, good. You know, yeah. and that old <laughs> signature of okay, changed the whole trajectory and direction of my life. It opened up doors that I never even know, knew were possible to brought me up to a higher echelon uh, of, of, of being around people who I looked up to all my life as my heroes mm. because I played with Herbie Hancock. They just took it for granted. You know, I had arrived. So I didn't have to go up through the trenches and auditions and all that stuff. They said, well, you played with Herbie Hancock. Uh, your credentials must be ordered. That included people like Art Blakey, Elvin Jones, McCoy Tyner, Joe Henderson, Jackie McLean, on and on and on. And so that, by Herbie saying, okay, changed my whole life. And that was over a half a century ago. And it had really, you know, just changed everything for me and, and, and allowed me to be at a place where I, I had always, always dreamed of being. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it was. It's, yeah, it's unbelievable. It's just, I'm still living the dream.